What's up guys, Ticket on Rampage here, so today we're going to be unboxing a brand new, unreleased anime exclusive. So let's check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to another Funko Pop video. Today we do have a little bit of a mail call unboxing video, and we also do have an unreleased Zenitsu figure that doesn't release for another month. So that's very exciting. But before we jump into all of that, we do have our question of the day, and that is, in your Funko Pop collection, what is the least expensive Funko Pop you own? Now technically, this would be the least expensive one that I do own, but it is signed, but I'm gonna show it off anyways, and we're gonna count it. Now that is the Momo, Funko Pop from My Hero Academia. According to the Funko app, this one is worth around $3. And it's been like that for about a year, two years now. I'm not exactly sure why, given she's worth at least retail around 10 to 12 bucks. But going based off the Funko app, three bucks. Now you also may have noticed that I am actually standing up in today's video. I have not done a standing video in a long time. Bailey actually recently purchased this little like stand for her TikTok unboxings and I figured I would give it a shot in a video and it feels kind of good to be able to move around a little bit, dance if I want to in the videos. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be opening up some packages. Now the first thing I want to show you guys, I already actually opened up because I was really scared when I saw this box like this. And I was also really scared when I opened it up and I saw that there were only plastic bags all around it and this thing could have been seriously crushed. It wasn't in a pop protector. It's around a $40 to $60 pop I think right now. Um, and that is the Heimdall Funko Pop. Luckily enough, it did not come damaged. I was really surprised to see that. And I wanted this for my Marvel collection, and I think what I'm going to do, I actually forgot to update you guys, I'm going to be putting more Marvel Funko Pops that I do own back here. So I want to mix in some of my Captain Americas. This is definitely going back there. I have a Doctor Strange figure now. I figured it doesn't have to be all Spider-Man because I own multiple different Marvel characters. Really quickly though, I do want to take Heimdall out of his box. This is an older box as well, guys. This box is from 2014. Good Lord, it's eight years old. I'm, I can't believe it's actually still in great shape, to be honest. Okay, so look at the Heimdall figure. This is really cool. So this is when he's standing at the gate with the sword here, and you can see his uh, the eyes kind of like go in the yellow eyes. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful. I feel like this pop definitely held up for its age. Obviously, we do have some cheaper Heimdall pops out there currently. Well, I think there's only like one or two other ones. I, I believe they made one from Thor Ragnarok, and it still might be around 20 to 30 bucks, to be honest. So, I don't know, because obviously when he died in um, Infinity War, was it Infinity War? Or was it the, was it Endgame? I think, no, it was Infinity War, because he died in the beginning when Hulk was sent to Earth. When he died, I think the pops, like, kind of, uh, like, shot up a little bit briefly, and then they kind of leveled out eventually, like all pops do. But still, this is a really cool one, to be honest, so I'm glad that I own it now. Now our next box, I'm not entirely sure what's in this box. I did only have three packages in my P.O. box, so I figured I would open up two more or show you guys two other things that I got before we do Zenitsu here. Oh! You know what's funny? I, I remember seeing this, but I don't remember buying it. I literally don't remember buying it, but I'm glad I did. I really, really like this one. Okay, so this is actually the Bizarro uh, DC Superman kind of like figure here. I think this is the only Bizarro Funko Pop as well. How old is this one? 2014 as well. These boxes are holding up for being eight years old. Almost a decade old. Wow. Well, I think this one's a little damaged, but still. This is really cool. Oh yeah, he's definitely crunched. I don't remember him being that damaged, but that's okay. I think I got this for a decent deal as well. It still has the original Hot Topic barcode sticker and the pre-release sticker on that. Look at that. Ooh, look at this. Oh, I love the hair detail. Jeez, that's stuck. That was a tight mold. Jeez. <laughs> it says Bizarro number one on the chest. That's awesome. Oh, that's so freaking cool. I love that. Oh, I didn't realize the cape actually had rips in it. I never knew that on this pop. I've owned it before, but I don't think I ever took it out of box. He definitely smells, though. Like, the paint does not smell great, so I'll probably keep this one in box. Um, unless I can get that to go away. Maybe I'll throw a dryer sheet in the box or something like that. I'm throwing him back in the box for right now though because he definitely stinks. Now we have our final box here and I did actually get an assist with this pop by a guy named George Hernandez and he does have a shop over in Texas. It's like a comic book shop and the pictures did look pretty cool. It's called 181 Comics and Collectibles I do believe but yeah I don't know if anybody's ever heard of his shop but he's a super nice dude. He did help me out and give me a little bit of a deal on this. Um, I shared some of his photos over on Instagram and he reached 
reached out and uh, he helped me out with a price on one so I could show you guys a little bit early. So yeah, super excited about this one. I wanted to check this one out since it did actually release and I didn't think I was gonna be able to get my hands on it for a decent price to be able to show you guys, but thank you so much again, George. Okay, so let's open this up. I know you guys have been waiting for this one and let's see. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, yes. Ooh, ooh. I'm so excited. Now, since I want to see the differences between the two current Zenitsu Funko Pops, I went ahead and grabbed my common version here. So let's take him out of the protector, and then we'll take this one out of the bubble wrap. Let me know down below, are you guys going to be picking up this one or passing on it? Usually when I do reviews, people sometimes change their minds, or sometimes it's the opposite way, and they're like, nah, I actually don't want that. So this could go either way. I was kind of surprised to see that they did not update the sticker on the stock to 2022, given it did technically release in 2022, but that's okay. That is okay. All right, so this is a big bulky protector. It's interesting. It does not fit the pop at all. I've never seen that before. Huh, interesting. All right, throw that down there. So there is the pop. Actually, it looks a lot better in person than it does in photos. I'm already seeing it in the box, like the lightning all around it. Obviously, yes, it does look like water, but I still think it looks a lot better in person. We're gonna take it out of the box in a second here, though. Very quickly, though, I do wanna remind you guys, according to a Crunchyroll rep, this one will be available next month, and I'm assuming it's going to be available over at Crunchyroll Expo. So if you're going to that event, this is possibly one of the ones they're going to reveal. And most likely, right after Crunchyroll Expo is when they're gonna drop it online. All right, taking it out of the box, let's see what this thing looks like like in person. Wow. Ooh, dang. This is cooler in person. A lot of people do not like this pop, but it looks cooler in person. I agree that they should have made it look more like electricity rather than water tentacles, essentially. That's definitely what it looks like, but the pop itself looks amazing. I love the hair flowing up, and then you have the electricity flowing in multiple different directions, carrying the rock all around him. He has his hand on his sword getting ready to pull it out and attack his opponent. Wow, that's crazy. This rock's even sticking to the electricity. Obviously, if you saw this like in an anime scene, it's gonna look a lot better, but I feel like they captured the scene they were going for pretty well outside of the electricity detail. One more quick thing to show you guys, this inner flap doesn't actually have any text like the commons did. And this is what I was referring to just now, the text inside the Demon Slayer common boxes. Now here's a side-by-side -side of both Zenitsu's here. So I feel like the middle part on the new one is a little rough, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't even look like two mold pieces. That's just kind of how it looks down the middle and it looks really ugly. Now his hair floating up does look really cool and you guys can tell the different shades of orange they used at the tips. I'm not exactly sure why they changed the color in the new one. It is possible that they try to make it more anime accurate than the original one, not sure. You can tell that the top of the hair is a little bit darker on this one as well. Though I will say I do prefer the hair on the common. I think it looks a lot better. Now the eyes closed is roughly the same as well as the same pose where he's holding his sword out and his robe is kind of floating up in this one and then obviously you do have the atmosphere around him with the lightning and the rocks floating up and on the back even the robe floating up is roughly still pretty much the same, the same sword kind of like stance essentially. Though I will have to say I do prefer the brand new Zenitsu because it has so much character to the mold versus the older one being very basic. Now I'm curious if they had this one in planning for a while now and maybe they always plan to release it as a Funimation exclusive. I'm not exactly sure how it got so delayed compared to the commons and other exclusives, but this would have been amazing on its first release. Even though the pop itself does have plenty of issues, I still think it's a fantastic mold and I'm glad that it was made. Again, hopefully Funko kind of hears our complaints and our critiques for the next exclusive that they do actually put lightning on because it's very weird because if you compare this lightning to so many other pops that have lightning out there, it's really weird on how they messed this up and even weirder how the licensors even approved it at all. This might be a hot take, but I think if they did the lightning a lot better and maybe even made it glow in the dark and put some lightning around his eyes, I think this would be the best Demon Slayer pop in the set. Well guys, that's everything that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button down below. I also want to hear you guys' comments on that Zenitsu exclusive. Are you going to be picking it up? Do you guys hate it? Do you love it? Let me know your thoughts down below. I do want to say a big shout out to all the Patreon supporters of the channel. Thank you guys so much. You guys absolutely rock. You guys make early videos like this happen with all of your support. So thank you guys so much. If you guys want to check out the Patreon, the link is down below. We have a Patreon only Discord where we share a lot of information, updates, restocks, links, and more. I also have a Facebook group that you can join that's buy, sell, and trade as well make sure to be following me on all my social medias all at Skittle Rampage for more updates. All right, love you guys. See you guys in the next one. See you guys later. Bye.